Hey guys, still here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I want to introduce you to the Iowa, or at least my version of the Iowa. And for this mission I have picked the one, there can be only one. Duel with an equally powerful modern battleship. We shall see who comes out on top. Now I have built two different versions of the Iowa already. Um, I had tried to stick as close to the possible stats that I could find. That is the Wikipedia stats. So I have the Iowa Mark II, which I think looks a little better because it has a main tower and a secondary tower and uh, it fits on all these 5 inch guns. The Iowa, historically, and I'm talking 1943, not the upgraded one with the Tomahawks and the Harpoon and the ship missiles, it had 9 16 inch guns, 2 uh, turrets on the bow and 1 on the stern, and it had 25 inch guns. So this is 10 per side, and on the other side you have the other 10. Now these guns are not terribly accurate, um, especially at longer ranges. You're not likely to hit anything. But they are there, and I wanted to go with a mostly historical build. The Iowa Mark I uh, looks slightly different, but as I have found, performs a little better. The ship has a displacement of 58,400 tons, a speed of 33 knots, as per uh, line with the Iowa. It does have a very small secondary island though, a secondary tower. And I had to squeeze on the secondary 5 inch guns, well, elsewhere, because the secondary tower cannot fit any. To make sure that I still have uh, something that resembles the 5 inch or the 5 uh, dual uh, guns for the 5 inch, I had to put them over here, which I really don't like. I think the other one looks better, but it seems to be slightly less well defended. I went with Krupp 4, Barbette 3, Anti-Torp 1, Double Hull, Reinforced uh, Mark 2 Bulkheads, Anti-Flood 2 and Citadel 5, all or nothing. Over here, I have Citadel 5, Anti-Flood 3, as opposed to Anti-Flood 2. I have uh, the Reinforced Bulkheads, I have a Double Hull, I have absolutely zero Torpedo Belt, because on this mission I know that the enemy battleship usually doesn't carry torpedoes, uh, or that I'm not going to get that close. As for the armor scheme, these things are incredibly heavily armored. Now, I might have armored them too much. Originally, Iowa, according to, again, to Wikipedia, had 12.1 inches or 307 millimeters of belt armor. So I went with 12.1. But you're looking at an armor quality of plus 118%. So I'm actually looking at double that. So maybe you could try to just half these numbers. But then again, I don't really want to. I like having these at the original numbers. We also have 12 inch belt extended armor, 6 inch deck armor, 5 inch deck extended. Uh, originally the decks had 1.5 inches of armor and the second deck had 6 inches of armor. So that's why I took the 6 as a value because it's the highest according to the wiki. 11 and a half inch conning tower armor. I couldn't really find what that was supposed to be. So I just went with the 11.5. 19.5 inch turret armor plus 118%. So you can almost say that this is 40 inches of armor. Um, translate that to centimeters and you're looking at about a meter. That is how much armor these things have. 19.5 inch turret top armor and 6 inch armor for the secondaries as was in line with the rest of the ship. Now it has generation 2 radar, improved radar rangefinder. I have a stereoscopic rangefinder. Electro-hydraulic turrets, ultra-reloaders, no torpedoes, high TNT explosives, super heavy shells, and increased shell rounds. So that I have just a few more. Because when I had this at standard, I found that I, well, tended to run out. Especially in prolonged engagements. For now, I'm going to take out the uh, Mar Iowa, let's say the Iowa Mark 1. The original build that I have. Let's see how well that performs. She is extremely survivable. I don't really like the look of the turrets, but survivability might be more important than looks. Now, you're not exactly going up against Yamato here. You can throw pretty much anything at you. Um, you don't exactly know what sort of battleship you're going to get. I just know that I'm fighting a battleship from the British Empire. And from the side profile, I'd say it has two bow turrets, two stern turrets, two funnels, and what might be a pagoda tower. Now, I already can see it, so it's not even too far away. And it can see me. 
All right. What I found to work best, especially with the more recent update, is to just go bow into the enemy, making your profile as small as possible, and especially with all this armor from the Iowa, let the Iowa's armor, especially on the turrets, take it, while pushing into the enemy. And the AI, especially at range, does not really seem to want to go um, anything less than broadside, which works perfectly for me. Because that way I can push in. I already took a pretty big hit there from HE. I have a lot of damage control on this ship, so it should be quite survivable. But you can see that the shells are definitely plunging through the deck. Identific identification, so identifying this ship is going to take quite a bit of time. I'm only at 14% so far. And by the looks of it, I haven't scored a single hit. My plan is to just rush in for now charge in and uh, I might take quite a bit of damage doing that but I found that once you're in like 10 12 kilometer range you can just completely outplay the AI because they will show broadside and I will not and I can pump that thing full of HE or uh, AP rounds and he can do very little in return I'm letting the AI just pick the shells for now probably gonna stick with HE for the foreseeable future and hoping that I can close that distance pretty quick. Now let's see what I can learn about this ship simply by looking at it. I'm seeing a couple of secondaries. These look like very small secondaries. Three inch potentially. There's another couple of maybe four inch. These might be five or six. Another five or six. Actually I think these might be six and these are five. Uh, no torpedoes. I was taking a bit of a hit again. I hope that I can finally hit this ship. Accuracy is only 12% though. Accuracy is pretty bad, but that's also because I'm rushing into that ship at 30 knots. That's not going to help with my accuracy much. Now in the meanwhile, he is going to be throwing as much stuff at me as possible. Um, I just hope that I can get some damaging hits on him. Uh, close the distance as quickly as possible and for those of you already typing up your comment yes I know that I can slow down and get more accuracy but I don't want to I want to close the distance it's currently 25.7 25.6 and we're approaching fast I want to cut him off at the pass so I am uh, at a slight angle there and we finally get our first hit first and our second apparently or at least damaging hits because the other ones so far haven't done much they've all been blocked now, what are we at? 23.4. We're getting there. As long as the ship is unidentified, I don't know what sort of armor it has, and the game is not going to show you how much of a chance you have to actually do damage to it. How much of a chance you have to penetrate the armor. Once you get that identification to 100%, you can immediately get an overview of what your chance to hit is. Of course, or, or rather, your chance to pen. I already know what my chance to hit is. Uh, my chance to pen what the angle is, and what I can do to make sure that it doesn't ricochet too much. Now, apparently even the HE is bouncing off of the stern there. There we go. Damage to the secondary tower. That's good. Because that's going to make his aim progressively worse the longer that this thing takes damage. But he is quick to put it out. And seeing how quick he might be to put it out, I think we might be dealing with a ship with a lot of bulkheads. So far, I'm sticking at 82%. I'm not doing too bad. Distance 18 kilometers. And you can see that the Iowa is taking damage, or at least taking hits. Uh, you can see all sorts of dents and hits on the bow, but so far nothing severe. The turrets with their 19 inch or 19.5 inch so far don't seem too heavily affected. It seems to be doing quite all right. Now, as long as I can continue to charge in, I should be fine. Have I taken some damage? Because I'm only doing 30.7 out of 31. I haven't taken any damage to the engines. Let's see, where's the battleship? Over there. So let's make a slightly starboard turn correction. Looks like a bit of scatter. Look at those dents. You're just blowing a part of the ship off, pretty much. 
Distance, 15.6. Identification, 87%. Soon I'll know if I can pen this ship, yes or no. And keep in mind, these guns get increasingly more dangerous the closer you get. The closer I get, let's say at about uh, 12 and a half kilometers, I can penetrate 36.4 inches of armor. That is a lot of armor. And my accuracy is similarly going up at 65%. So at close distances, I found that the ship just continues to work better and better and better. And that's why I'm rushing in. And for some reason, the enemy unit is not exactly firing HE back at me. And that could be its downfall. Because as long as it's firing AP, it won't really do much. Because it's all going to bounce off. Alright, we have the uh, Illustrious over here. With 16 inches of armor, plus 98. If you zoom out a little, you can see that I have a 65% chance of penetration. So now I'm going to go with AP. Uh, I have a ricochet chance that is low. I am looking at the side slash deck at 81%, or, uh, 81%, slight angle, and now I'm immediately inflicting flooding because I'm hitting him below the waterline. Important here is that I keep my bow right into the enemy. I don't want this thing to start taking too much damage. A bit of fire, another fire, and so far it's... Just that one segment on the bow, that's all. Now, illustrious, Iowa is going to get very accurate and very deadly. Damage to the main gun, good. The fewer he has of those, the less damage I'm going to take. And that's not the only gun I've damaged. The other gun, uh, this one on the bow, has also taken a pretty good blow. As long as I can keep doing damage to those guns, I can cut his firepower in half. And on top of everything, he is going to get less and less damage output from his secondaries as well. Because I think I already knocked out one of these things. His accuracy is 70, uh, sorry, 17 inch guns and 46%. I am at 100% chance to pen, or chance to hit. Chance to penetrate, 70%. And it is still going up. Almost at 71%. That's because I'm continuously closing the distance. And he just keeps sailing broadside. Perfect. Continue with your broadside. See how well you're going to do. 71.5. I still have a slight ricochet angle and he seems to be making... Is he turning? He might be making a very genuine or very slight turn to starboard. I took a bit of damage to my A turret there. 72.3. I'm still looking at pretty perfect flat broadsides there. 85% chance. 5 degree offset on the angle there. I'm looking at the side slash deck, by the way. Now, apparently, the game um, already calculates that it has a top of 31.6 inches of armor. So that's that 16 inch plus 98%. And it is not enough to keep the Iowa off of him. Sure enough, early on I took quite a bit of damage. But for now, I haven't taken that much. The recent hits just haven't done that much. Whereas I have definitely been beating up the Illustrious a lot. Let's speed things along a little. A couple of more damage to the main gun. Looks like the, uh, what is it? I think that would be the Y turret. Or the X turret, X, y, uh, X turret and Y turret, A turret and B turret. Yep, it's continually taking a lot of damage. How much is my angle? 87, it's just a 4 inch deviation. Pen chance is going down though, because he's making a poor turn. In which case I'll be looking at his stern pretty soon. But it also does something else. It puts those two bow turrets out of the fight. Pan chance, still 70%. Let's make a slight course correction again to starboard. Once again, everything's bouncing off. At this point, the stern turret also took a hit. But so far, the floatability is 100% and the structural integrity is 100%. And I still have my A and my B turrets. 
So all of that seems to be perfectly fine. Panchans... 43%. Oh. If it is down to 43%, I'm going to switch to HE. And especially having done quite a bit of damage with AP already, I might be able to knock this thing down further and do some more damage to it, because the armor has taken a pretty bad beating already. So hoping that the HE is going to do a little more. Now sometimes you can see a couple of smaller rounds coming in. Those are uh, the secondaries. This one and that one, and potentially the one here. Although it's a little harder to see. Yep, actually all the secondaries are firing. Because they're sort of super firing. Or at least they're positioned so that most of these guns can still fire. Unfortunately, I did lose my funnel. And this is something that the Iowa Mark I suffers from. The funnel can get damaged, and I don't have a secondary. The uh, Iowa Mark II does have a secondary funnel. And with that, is more survivable, generally. Speaking of survivability, Illustrious is not looking good. The whole hull has been mauled by impacts. The ship is on fire in various locations. It has taken a bit of flooding damage. Structural integrity is down to 30%. It has taken damage to the rudder, to the engines, to the conning tower. It's still on fire and it's still flooding. It's still firing back at me with only two guns. The bow guns are simply not capable of rotating this far and are thus completely ineffective. Chance to pen, 41%. And look at that, I have a high chance to ricochet. That's why I'm sticking with my HE shells. Boom. Damage to main gun. More fire set. Structural down to 26. The only thing that I really have to keep focusing on is making sure that I stay on target. That I stay with my bow pointed into the enemy. As long as I can do that, the Iowa is very likely to survive this encounter perfectly fine. Because that bow and those turrets are exceptionally heavily armored. And those turrets, keep in mind, these things are protecting quite a bit. Because... Oh, the fire is getting a bit in the way of what I wanted to explain. Hopefully we can put that out soon. Come on. Damage control parties to the bow. Extinguish those fires. One fire. There we go. This is what you're looking at. This is pretty much the shell angle that I'm currently at. So the turrets will absorb the brunt of the impact. Then we have the bow, but it's very angled. So it's not going to take that much damage from AP rounds. And on top of that, it is not just likely to ricochet, but it's also likely to have quite a bit of armor on there because of my deck extended armor. The secondaries with 6 inches might be the first ones to go. Um, and the conning tower with 11 inch point, or I think 11.5 inch, should be perfectly survivable. And sure enough, the damage to the ship is fairly extensive. I'm down to 77%. But not nearly as bad as the Illustrious, which is now down to 21. It's still flooding, it's still on fire, but as you can see I'm only doing damage to the stern of the ship. Now, you might not need a battleship to do 33 knots, but for this design, the Iowa design that I've come up with, it definitely works. Because you're able to close that distance very quickly and go completely bow in. At longer ranges, longer distances, greater fighting range, it just doesn't work as well. But at these short ranges, Iowa uh, is, well, she's not impervious. Not at all, because as you can see, I did lose my conning tower. It got damaged. But both the mains and the secondaries are looking at an extremely high accuracy. Which is unsurprising, because I'm currently at 6 kilometers out. And I'm just doing damage all over the Illustrious. This ship is going down. Now one thing that I haven't... Hold on. I got hit by a torpedo. Oh, sorry, it does have torpedoes. It has a bow and a stern launcher. Oh, that's not good, because that's not something that the eye was built to counter. I'm now flooding. I do have auxiliary 1 and 2. 
So hopefully the damage control parties are going to be quickly capable of reducing that damage and pumping that water back out. But that torpedo was something that I had not expected. Well played to the illustrious there. Although it's probably its last trick, as it is now very much running out of health. 5% left. Yeah, flooding is under control. Both engines have taken a bit of a beating, and I'm down to 18.5 knots. Even if this ship does get away from me a little bit, which at 16 knots it won't shit, there's another torpedo. Um, I will still win this fight. But I should take more care to avoid the torpedoes. Hopefully I can sink him before he sends out his other torpedo again. No, he just fired a torpedo. Okay. Dodge that. Make a turn. Ammo detonation. Perfect. Come on, Iowa. Turn. Get out of the path of the torpedo. I know it's there somewhere. Now, I fought a couple of fights with the Iowa against various designs of the enemy. So, various... There's the torpedo. Various AI designs. But, so far, none of them were armed with torpedoes. So, it's actually quite refreshing to see that the AI does arm its battleships with torpedoes every now and then. At this point, though, it's down to flooding 14%. Structural down to 0 0.6. Floodability 10%. 9. That was quite a bit of damage to the main tower. Now, most of the damage that this ship took, the Iowa, it was all thanks to their torpedoes. Those do a load of damage. 47, 175 at the top. But considering that I had quite a bit of additional armor and great damage control parties and many bulkheads, or maximum amount of bulkheads, the torpedo damage was actually contained pretty quickly. Had this ship not had torpedoes, the Illustrious, there's another torpedo. Uh, right now it's finally out. Had it had not that many torpedoes, I think I would have stuck the battle at 68% structural damage. Or 68% structural integrity. Now how exactly the Illustrious is still afloat is a pretty big question. Pretty... There we go. She sinks down to heavy flooding. So, Iowa. Uh, of course this is not the only way that you can build the Iowa. The Iowa Mark II, I personally like the look of a little better, because the Mark II has two of those funnels. But I believe that I sacrificed something else. I sacrificed my turret top armor. On the other design, this was 19.5, and I had far more armor on the deck and the deck extended. But this secondary tower is heavy. That's 6,000 tons. If you're looking at the tower that I used, which is this one, it's a tower that weighs 1,500 tons. So sure enough, this tower looks better, but you are going to be sacrificing a lot of armor with it. And that's why on um, the Iowa Mark I, if you want to call it that, that's why I decided to go with smaller ones so I could tack on more armor. And as you could see in the video, it doesn't really impact accuracy that much because you can still definitely do quite a lot of damage despite the fact that uh, you're using a slightly inferior secondary tower. This one has 24 aiming speed, but moreover, uh, I think not even any long-range accuracy. Yeah, 5 points, and this one gives you 12 points. Also, damage control is slightly faster with this one, and you're more likely to spot enemy torpedoes. That would have been handy, but the Iowa Mark II... Not only comes with that, but also Anti-Flood 2 and Anti-Torpedo 1. So torpedo damage is automatically reduced by 25%. Now one thing that the game, as far as I know, does not have yet, is an ability to just upload or download these designs. So I can make a copy, and it's going to copy it into a new ship design tab. But it's not going to copy it into a place where I can share the design with you. If you want to copy it, you're just going to have to do it by hand, I'm afraid, until they actually implement that feature. So, um, I would recommend the Iowa base design. 58,400, 33 knots, very short range until the campaign hits, that is. Maximum bulkheads, diesel 2, oil, forced boilers, aux 3. This one is the one that saved me, because this allowed the water pumping to be pretty damn fast. And the same goes for ship repairs. 
Shaft 3, uh, not really required. Not really required, but it does sacrifice less of your engine speed, of your max speed penalty, from taking engine damage. If you want to save some weight, you can by going with none of these. I used it also in that video uh, as a bit of ad hoc way to get out of the way of the torpedo because it adds 30% turning rate. But considering how this ship fights, I think you could do without it. And that saves you, well, a little bit of weight, but really not that much. Look at how it changes. Weight, 57, 523, 57, 873. That's all. That's all. And come to look at it, um, I could even add more armor at this point. I haven't even used all of my displacement. So I could set up... No, anti-torp 1's too heavy. I can't do that. But I could go for a uh, unhistorical an increase of, let's say, conning tower armor. Maybe I can increase that. I don't know if I can increase it all the way to 19.5. I might just be able to, though. And that would make her even more survivable. Because the conning tower was something that took quite a bit of damage. Yep, there we go. 19.5 inches of conning tower armor. 5 inch deck extended. Can I get that to 6? No, 6 is too heavy. 5, 8 is the limit. So within the parameters that I have to work with, I think this is as heavily armored as I can put it. Anyway... Hope you enjoyed the fight. Hope you enjoyed the Iowa. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what sort of designs you can come up with. And I'm hoping that very soon they're going to be adding that ability to just not save your designs, but also share them. And I wouldn't be surprised that when the game eventually hits Steam, potentially uh, sometime next year, they're going to be adding that as maybe a Steam Workshop design. So that you can upload your own designs to the Steam Workshop. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know what design you want me to make next and what, for what sort of design you would like to see, historical based, and I'll get to building and uh, testing it out against the enemy. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the channel, then please subscribe and I'll make sure that you automatically get notified of the next video. See you then.